hey hi hello welcome or welcome back to my channel my name's lauren this angle's a little wonky but we're gonna work with it and for today's video i have my Aurelium spring equinox tbr so if you're unfamiliar with Aurelium, it is the magical readathon created by g over at book roast and it's kind of like an rpg style readathon where there are prompts based on your like you create a character so my character's name is poppy and we went on this quest to go to the Aurelium school and each i think it's summer or fall and spring we have like classes that we take and we also went to like the little shopping market in december and it's just a really good time so this is my third semester participating in Aurelium. So here are the books that I have on my TBR. I have my list of prompts here. Um, my character is currently an illusionist rogue. So that is the, um, that's the calling that I chose originally. And then each semester, um, G has been adding different, um, different callings that you can choose. So this semester she has the wild form druid um, calling. And so I decided to double up and I'm doing both because look at that lion. That's so fun. So it's a pretty intense little education, I guess, choice to do both of them. I mean, the wild form druid has a giant list those are all the prompts that I have to do for spring. So let's just get into it. I am also participating in Realmathon and Old School April in April. Um, so there will be another video coming with my TBR for Old School April. Um, but basically for Realmathon, I am on the fantasy team. Um, I forget the name. But I'm on the fantasy team, so what I'm hoping is I picked like a very fantasy heavy TBR for Aurelium. So I'm hoping that I'll just be able to use these books and just plug them into whatever points I can find for Realmathon. Um, and then with old school April, I'm probably going to read a lot of YA and middle grade. So it should be no problem to be able to do both. Fingers crossed. Um, so let's just get into it. So the first prompt is one that I haven't done yet. Where did I put my penny? Oh no. Is the first prompt is for the class animal studies and you have to flip a coin and heads you have to read a nonfiction book, tails you have to read a fiction book. So let me find my penny and then we can do that. Okay, so you know how I said I was gonna focus on fantasy so I could use the points for a realmathon. This might be one of the exceptions, one of like two exceptions. So I'm also trying to read as many special edition books as I have um, because they really just need to get read is what it boils down to. Like I have so many Fairy Loot and Illumicrate books that I just, they keep piling up and so I need to read them to see if I like them. So for my nonfiction book, I chose Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I do have this whole set of the Illumicrate special editions of the Emily Henry books. They are super fun colored. Um, this might actually work for Old School April as well because one of the prompts is um, a book with like neon -y colors and this is feeling very 90s to me. So I don't know much about this one. I just know that I recently got a job at like a book place and I have seen this like a book warehouse and I have seen this book like 800,000 times and so I'm like I should probably read this. So the back says Nora is a cutthroat literary agent at the top of her game. Her whole life is books. Charlie is an editor with a gift for creating bestsellers and he's Nora's work nemesis. Nora has been through enough breakups to know she's the one men date before finding their happily ever after. To prevent another dating dud, Nora's sister peruse, persuades her to swap her city desk for a month's holiday in Sunshine Falls. It's a small town straight out of a romance novel, novel but instead of meeting sexy lumberjacks, handsome doctors, or cute bartenders, 
Nora keeps bumping into Charlie. She's no heroine and he's no hero. So can they take a page out of an entirely different book? So I'm excited to pick this one up. And maybe if I, if I like this one, maybe I'll read the other two. Who knows? Maybe it'll spark some interest there. So my next class is Art of Illusion, which I have to take two times because of the two callings. And for that one, I have to match my clothes colors to the cover. So I took what I'm wearing today, which is my literally dead um, book club shirt, which is orange and black. So I didn't have much choices. So I, I, it's very hard to find orange books. So I've got Legend by Marie Lu. This is a part of, I think it's the Illumicrate series. Fairy loot. It's a fairy loot book. Um, so I do have all four of the books in the series. I've never read them. They are special editions. Look at that foiling. I love a go good naked hardcover. I mean, come on. And I know it's dystopic sci-fi, I believe. Um, and I think, when was it published? Reissued. 2011? So it came out right towards the end of the hype of like dystopic sci-fi, but um, I've never read a Marie Lu either. So I am excited to give this one a shot. It doesn't have a description on it. It just says each day means everything's possible again. So we're going in kind of blind. And for my second book that is orange, we are going with Heart of the Sun Warrior because there is no way that I'm getting to this this month for final book support group. Um, I loved Daughter of the Moon Goddess. It was one of my favorite reads of last year, and this is the end of the duology for that. So I'm excited for all of the, there's some orange, all of the fantasy fairy tale vibes from this book. Um, yeah. My next prompt is... For astronomy and I had to find a book with two letter E's in the title so for this one I'm reading a book that I just had to have and haven't read yet which is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill this from what I understand it's a high fantasy let's see oh it's blurbed by Lev Grossman from The Magicians so that's fun um, we've got Alex Green as a young girl in a world much like ours except for its most sentimental event the Mass Dragoning of 1955. When hundreds of thousands of ordinary wives, mothers, sprout wings, scales, and talons left a trail of fiery destruction in their paths and took to the skies. Was it their choice? What will become of those left behind? Why did Alex's beloved Aunt Marla transform, but Alex's mother did not? No one knows it's taboo to speak of. Forced into silence, Alex nevertheless must face the consequences of this astonishing event. A mother more protective than ever, an absentee father, their upsetting instance that her aunt never even existed, and watching her beloved cousin Beatrice become dangerously obsessed with the forbidden. In this timely and timeless speculative novel, um, Kelly Barnhill boldly explores rage, memory, and the tyranny of forced limitations. So I'm excited. It sounds like a good feminist time and there are dragons. So I'm excited. Also, this cover is beautiful. All right. So for my next class, I have Elemental. No, I have Conjuration which is a book recommended by a friend. So for this, I went to my Ramathon host favorites sheet and I was looking for the Sword of Kaigen because that is Kaylee's recommendation, but I either don't own it or I don't know where it is. So I went with another book, um, which is Part of Your World by Ab Abby Jimenez, which is Rai, one of Rai's host favorites. And I believe this was pitched as having like Gilmore Girl vibes and I bought it a while ago and it's been on my, on my radar. Um, I love a good contemporary romance and this will be a nice quick read in between all of these chunky fantasies. 
So for the next class, I have Elemental Studies, which is flower on the cover. This is a book that I was so excited about getting in my fairy loot. And then I just never actually read it yet. So this was from January. So that's not too far off. But I have the last tale of The Flower Bride by Roshani Tchotchke. Um, I'm not 100% sure what is this about. I know it's a fantasy. Once upon a time, a man who believed in fairy tales marries a beautiful, mysterious woman named Indigo Maxwell Castaneda. He was a scholar of myths. She was a heiress to a fortune. They exchange gifts and stories and believe that they would live happily ever after. And in exchange for her love, Indigo extracted a promise that her bridegroom would never pry into her past. But when Indigo learns that her estranged aunt is dying and the couple is forced to return to a childhood home, the house of dreams, the bridegroom soon finds himself unable to resist. From within the crumbling manor's extravagant rooms and musty halls, there lurks the shadows of another girl, Azure, Indigo's dearest childhood friend who disappears without a trace. As the house slowly reveals his wife's secrets, the bridegroom will be forced to choose between reality and fantasy, even if doing so threatens to destroy their marriage or their lives. So, ooh, lush, haunting atmosphere of Mexican Gothic with the dreamy enchantments of the invisible life of Addie LaRue. So it's a spellbinding and darkly romantic page turner about love and lies, secrets and betrayal, and the stories we tell ourselves to survive. So I'm excited to pick that one up. Next we have spells and incantations. So for this prompt, you have to pick a book that is a target length of 381, no, 389 to 415. So I had to um, cheat a little bit because it was really hard to find something in that range. So I have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, and this has 370 pages. Um, I have not read this trilogy yet. I know, shocker. And if I like it, unfortunately, I only have the first and the third book. I don't have the second. So if I end up wanting to binge it, I'll have to go to the bookstore all darn. Um, I know that it's a fairy fay story. I know that there's possibly romance. I know that people either love this or hate this. So I'm excited to give it a try. I have historically really liked Holly Black's writing. So I'm thinking this is going to be a hit for me, but we will find out. Next we have um, psionics and divination. And for this, you need a cloud on the cover or in the title. So for this, I chose God Killer by Hannah Kaner. Um, this was another book that I was super excited about. And I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, it's another fairy loot or Illumicrate. Um, I think it actually has some sci-fi elements to it, which is interesting because it looks so fantasy-like, but um, I'm counting like this foggy mist stuff as clouds. Um, oh, next I have to close my eyes, shuffle, and point to choose a book. So... I guess we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, let's hope for the best. This is a weird angle, but close your eyes, shuffle, and point. Ooh, we got a chunky one. All right, so for my final two books for shape shifting, I need a book with a wolf on the cover, title, or author's name. So for this, I have to choose two books. So I have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. I'm pretty sure this is a Red Riding Hood retelling. So we're matching our fairy tale folk, folk tale um, vibes. 
And I also chose Nightshade by Andrea Creamer. Creamer? So obviously this is a Woof Shapeshifter novel from the good old Twilight era of books. It's been on my shelf for a long time. I've been trying to work my way through some of these older YA books that I have. So this is a perfect opportunity to do that. So I think that's all I have for this video today. Um, I've got quite some chunky books here. I mean, this is, let me get my stack together. This is the stack of books that I have on my TBR. They're huge and they are fantasy. Um, so my spring semester is going to be super busy for Aurelium and I have got a lot of writing to, or reading to do. Um, so if you're participating in Aurelium, let me know down in the comments below. If you made it to the end of this video and you want to leave me an emoji, maybe, maybe some sort of like magical emoji, like, um, is there a crystal ball or like a witch or something? Leave that down below in the comments and I will just see you in my next video, whatever that is. Bye.